Are the BYD Blade batteries built to last or built to throw away? The question keeps popping up in my comments and today we are going to answer it clearly, simply and, and with real data you can use. Let's set the stage. The blade is BYD's twist on LFB, lithium iron phosphate cells. They are long, thin and packed straight into the case with almost no wasted space. That cell to pack approach cuts parts, weight and cost. It also gives you LFP's big perks, safer chemistry, very low fire risk, and a long cycle life if you treat it right. You've probably seen the nail penetration demos where the cell barely gets warm. Cool show, but here's the real hook. Safety is only half the story. The other half is whether these packs can be repaired, upgraded, and kept on the road for years without, without turning your car into an e-waste. Here's how the blade idea works in plain English. Instead of small bricks built into larger bricks, BYD stretches each cell like a plank. Those planks stacked side by side with cooling plates tucked in, then the pack closed like a sturdy suitcase. Fewer layers means fewer connections, less heat in the wrong places, and better efficiency. In LFP land, that's a win because LFP doesn't store as much energy per kilogram as nickel based chemistries. Cut the overhead and you get decent range without paying for exotic materials. Now let's talk lifespan. LFP chemistry is the tortoise, not the hare. It doesn't charge as fast at cold temperatures and it's heavier for same range, but it's tough. Many LFP packs can handle thousands of full cycles before they drop to 80% capacity. If you drive 300 kilometers on a charge, a couple thousand cycles is hundreds of thousands of kilometers. Taxis in China running LFP packs past half a million kilometers aren't unicorns. They are a clue that chemistry managed well can be very durable. The blade design leans into that by keeping temperature under control and avoiding hot spots that chew up cells. So where does the disposable rumor come from? Three words, cell to pack. When you delete modules, you make it harder to stop a small section later. If one slice goes weak, can a technician replace a few blades or, or does the whole pack need surgery? That's the fear. To be fair, this isn't just a BYD problem. Most modern EVs are pushing towards bigger, more integrated packs to save a space and cost. The trade-off is serviceability. Traditional modular packs let you pop out one bad block. Cell-to-pack packs demand tighter tolerances and cleaner labs to work inside. In short, repairs can be done, but not by a corner shove with a Phillips screwdriver. Let's get practical. What tends to fail first? It's usually not the chemistry. It's the seals, sensors, high voltage contactors, or damage from road debris and curb hits. Blade packs use strong cases and underbody shields because punctures are bad news for any battery. If something inside does go wrong, the automaker has two paths authorized module level repairs inside a clean facility or a full pack replacement. Bivody has been building an after sales network in its new markets, training service technicians and stocking parts. That matters. A tough pack is great. A tough pack plus local support is what keeps cars out of scrapyards. There's also the BMS, the brain. Think of it like a goalie that never sleeps. It watches each group of cells, measures current, voltage, and temperature, and adjusts how hard you can charge or discharge. If the pack is cold, it slows charging to protect the graphite from lithium plating. If the pack gets too warm, it cuts power. Or once the BMS learns your real capacity by tracking energy in and out and making corrections after the car rests. This isn't sexy, but it's how long life actually happens. A smart, a smart BMS plus LFP's calm chemistry is why many blade packs should age gracefully. But here, let's not dodge the challenge. Even with LFP's durability, a deep shunt repair replacing a section of cells needs special fixtures, adhesives, isolation checks, and, and a high voltage test environment. That's not driveway DIY. If the car takes a hard hit and the pack shell deforms, insurers might jump straight to replacement. 
especially in places where labor is pricey. That's where the disposable label sneaks in. Not because the chemistry wears out fast, but because the economics of Reaper can push towards swapping the whole pack. The fix isn't magic, it's a standardization, trained service network, and sensible insurance policy, and sensible insurance policies that recognize safe approved pack repairs. Now for something people forget, LFP's Cobalt Freemix helps on the supply side. It reduces dependence on pricier geopolitically messy materials. That doesn't make it green by default, but it does simplify recycling. Hydrometallurgical recyclers can recover lithium iron and phosphorus efficiently. And Bivody and its partners already feed old cells back into the loop. End of life doesn't have to be a landfill moment. It can be a pipeline back to raw materials if the take-back system is in place. Europe is pushing hard here with battery regulations that require recycling and traceability. As BYD expands, it has to play by those rules. Now let's pull these threads together. Are blade batteries disposable? If by disposable you mean short life, the answer is no. The chemistry is long life, and the pack design focuses on safety and thermal control that helps life. If by disposable you mean hard to service at home, then yes, like most modern EV packs, deep reapers aren't a Saturday project. That's the trade. Lower cost and higher safety tanks to fewer parts in exchange for reapers that move to trained facilities. The real question is whether the service network is ready. In markets where BYD already has a strong dealer coverage, pack issues get handled like engine issues used to. Diagnose, repair if safe, replace if needed, and recycle. In markets that are still ramping up, wait times and costs can be spikier. That's not a blade problem alone. That's an infrastructure problem every new EV brand faces. Here's the key moment you came for. If you daily charge between 20 and 80%, precondition before fast charging in the cold, and don't hammer the pack with back-to-back -back fast charging on a near to full, you'll likely see gentle aging. The BMS is built to keep you out of trouble, even if you're not a battery nerd. And if something does go sideways, what decides whether your car survives isn't its blade or blocky. It's whether the automaker has trained technicians, stock parts, and a clear path to approved pack repairs. On those three points, BYD is sprinting in Europe and beyond, because that's the only way to sell millions of cars without creating millions of headaches. So no, Blade isn't a disposable stunt. It's a safety first, cost-cutting design with a realistic service trade-off. If you value peace of mind, LFP plus a watchful BMS is a strong combo. If you value easy home repair, well, new packs in 2026 at least aren't built like Lego, no matter the brand. What matters is the promise behind the product, the warranty length, the parts pipeline, and a service map that doesn't leave you stranded. If you want to go deeper, how the BMS actually calculates state of health, why cold charging can lie to your gauge, and the simple habits that make a pack last longer, grab the BMS course. The link is in the description. Thank you.